Hey everyone, today we have a lot to talk about from the reasons why Google search is going down the drain in terms of result quality to the release of Fedora 40 and Ubuntu 24.04 LTS to Nvidia now contributing to NVK on top of contributing to Nuvo and to the US passing a law that will either force TikTok to sell its entire business or to just be banned it was a strange week, and so to make it more normal, I thought I would add the segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Proton Mail. You probably know about their open source, end-to-end, -end, and zero-access encrypted email service. It gives you all the tools you need to ensure that you're not tracked inside your inbox and to protect your privacy when sending and receiving emails with tracker blockers, email aliases, spam and phishing protections, and a lot more. But Proton also gives you an entire suite of tools with a VPN, a calendar, a password manager, and an online storage space. And they also just announced that they are joining forces with Standard Notes, an open source and encrypted note-taking application already used by 300,000 people, meaning that you will soon have notes in your Proton suite of online services as well. And if you're like me and you've been looking for a complete replacement to the suite of privacy invasive tools that comes from Apple, Microsoft or Google, this is great news. You can create a free Proton Mail account right now to enjoy all the current tools Proton offers and you can get ready for notes to arrive in the future. And if you need more features or more storage space, they have paid plans as well. I went for the Mail Plus plan personally, but they have options for everyone. You can check them out using the link in the description below. Okay, so this week I happened upon an interesting article pointing out at why Google search is getting worse and worse, basically becoming a roundabout way to get to Reddit, which is the only place still giving you decent results, and the rest being pretty spammy websites. It is a pretty oriented post about specific people at Google that I don't personally know or have heard about, so take it with a grain of salt. But the gist of it is, it looks like Google search is being eaten by the Google Ads division. Meaning that the main point of Google search is no longer to provide results so people would use the engine and then potentially click on ads. It's to push ads and ad growth at all costs, including using weird growth hacking techniques that makes the experience worse in the long run. Basically, it seems like the manager behind Google Ads, who has now been promoted to the head of Google Search, is a pure consultant and middle manager, and he has repeatedly ignored the advice or concerns of longer-term Google employees that helped build Google Search. They turned it into a growth-at-all-cost product. The article is very much pointing the finger at this specific person, which isn't always the best thing to do because this person would not have been able to implement what they did if the higher-ups and the hierarchy were not on board with that, but the article is still nicely documented and recaps a story that seems to repeat itself in big tech companies. You have good engineers and product people that built great tools that make the company work and grow in the first place, and then they're being replaced by middle managers that only see numbers and don't look at long-term impacts or at the general experience that their product offers. Now, it should come as a surprise to virtually no one that this is the main reason, as those businesses sort of grow and the people who created those businesses are phased out and replaced by pure managers who only look at numbers. They tend to go down the drain and just focus on gaining 0.01% growth instead of actually making the product better. And in 2024, we need more barriers in these search engines to filter out spammy, clickbaity, low-quality websites because AI-generated content is everywhere already. And it is spammier, clickbaitier, and lower quality than what people already wrote themselves. Now, it looks like the US really does not want TikTok to exist in their country, or at least not in its current form. The House passed a bill that will force TikTok to either sell its activities in the US to a US company or to be banned entirely. The Senate ratified the bill this week as well, which was then signed by President Biden, meaning that it's now official. TikTok has to sell or be banned. 
The gist of it is that there's a big fear in the US that TikTok is being used by the Chinese government to push propaganda and to interfere in the US elections this year, or just to implement mass surveillance on US citizens. There isn't any real public evidence that this is happening right now, but TikTok is owned by a Chinese company called ByteDance, and while they say there's a firewall in TikTok's offices in LA, some have reported that data still moves to China anyway. So TikTok will now have one year to find a buyer in the US or they will be banned. The issue is ByteDance said that they have no intentions of selling their algorithm without which I don't think the US would be satisfied. They would rather be banned. And even if this could be circumvented in any way, TikTok is worth a lot of money and finding a buyer willing to pay that would not be extremely easy. And if you really think about it, this is not a good thing. This law fixes nothing. First, you cannot ban an app because you dislike it. That makes no sense. Second, banning it in a year doesn't solve the election interference problem if this is a real problem because the elections will happen before. TikTok is banned. And third, even if TikTok agreed to sell, well, it would only be bought by a giant tech company in the US. So Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, or whatever else. And so it would be yet another giant data pool owned by a giant US company, which doesn't solve the privacy problem either. So no matter how I dislike TikTok, which is a lot, I don't think it should be banned for these reasons. And if you're afraid of data going from the US, to China, there are ways to put limitations in place without banning the app. The EU has done that with services from the US because the US did exactly what they're accusing China of doing. So it's a weird thing and I don't think it's gonna help anyone. Now it looks like Nvidia's investment in our open source driver stack is ongoing. After the former Nouveau maintainer, now an Nvidia employee, contributed a big set of patches to Nouveau, there's now another NVIDIA developer who's opening a merge request for the NVK Vulkan drivers. The developer in question is called Arthur Huillet, and he used to contribute to Nouveau as well before working for NVIDIA. His contribution is basically adding support for a Vulkan extension. But what's interesting here is that NVIDIA seems to be willing to work on open source drivers now, and not just on their own open source modules, or their proprietary drivers. There is no official announcement on how much of these contributions we can expect, if it's just individuals electing to help on their own time or if it's company policy, but it is still direct contribution from people working at NVIDIA from their official NVIDIA email addresses. Hopefully, NVIDIA can follow in the footsteps of AMD and can become as much of a good open source citizen as the red team can be. And honestly, this is great news. If Nvidia lends a hand on Nouveau and NVK, we might end up in the same situation as with AMD, where 99% of Nvidia users on Linux will just use Nouveau and NVK, and the 1% who need CUDA or compute-specific tasks will use the proprietary drivers. This is sort of the dream, although it does put into question the future of NVIDIA's official open source modules. Will they drop them? Will they help contribute to the general thing that everyone is building but still release their own stuff? It's unclear. Ubuntu 24.04 LTS was released this week alongside all of its official variants. It is an LTS version, so it does get up to 12 years of support, and it will be the base for the next Linux Mint, Elementary OS, Zorin OS, KDE Neon, and a lot more. In terms of what it brings, it is not a big update. You get GNOME 46 without any tweaks from Ubuntu, and you also get the kernel 6.8, so technically you should see improved battery life thanks to the new P-State drivers and improved performance profiles. There are a few other changes under the hood, notably with the installer, now letting you do automatic installs with a YAML file, and also having been redesigned a bit to look more cohesive, and frankly, to look a lot nicer. There are also improvements for gamers, which should see less game crashes. If you're coming from Ubuntu 23.10, you are not going to have a drastically improved experience, but if you're coming from the previous LTS, you're gonna have a lot to enjoy. 
As per the other flavors, it's a big nothing burger. Everything sticks to the versions of their desktop environment that they used before. Ubuntu Budgie saw some small improvements to their applets. Ubuntu Cinnamon moved to Cinnamon 6. But everything else is kind of stuck in the exact same place, especially Kubuntu and Ubuntu Studio, which do not get Plasma 6, unfortunately. It is a boring release, but for an LTS, boring is good, because this is not the place to make sweeping changes. I think 24.10 and 25.04 will be way more interesting because GNOME 47 and GNOME 48 will come with a lot more exciting updates. For now, it's still worth looking at it, although apparently a lot of people are reporting big problems when upgrading their Ubuntu installs in place, so maybe wait a bit on that because you might break your system if you do it right now. And in the same vein, Fedora 40 was released this week, this time without too much delay. It brings GNOME 46 as well for its main workstation edition, but they do get Plasma 6 for their KDE spin. And all the other spins also received as many updates as their respective desktops received themselves, which is to say, not a lot. They also took the opportunity to replace the immutable label for these sort of distros, and they put them under the Fedora Atomic Desktop banner instead. Fedora 40 is also the first version of this distro to come with a pre-built package for PyTorch, something that is used for AI training and development, and is apparently difficult to install and to get running properly. That's very much in line with Fedora's ambition to be the Linux distro for AI. The first version of that package is not pre-configured to use the GPU or potential neural processing units that your computer might have, so this is not a full-on solution immediately. On top of that, you're also getting the kernel 6.8, but the brand new Anaconda installer is not ready yet, so it will be delayed again. This launch of Fedora 40 is also accompanied by a dedicated laptop, the Fedora Slimbook 2. It's basically the exact same laptop that I'm using right now. It's a sleek and lightweight 16-inch, although it also comes in a 14-inch variant. It's got Intel CPUs, a 90Hz refresh rate, 3K display, and an RTX 4060, if you go for the 16-inch model, and also some Fedora branding. It's a great laptop, I've been using the exact same chassis and hardware for a while now, although mine comes from another manufacturer, but it is the exact same computer and it's great. So congrats on the release to both Ubuntu and Fedora. Those are both relatively uninteresting new versions, except if you're a KDE user on Fedora, because you're getting Plasma 6 compared to a Kubuntu user who doesn't. And let's finish this with the gaming news. We have some more work on the NVK open source drivers for NVIDIA. In Mesa 24.1, this driver will support implicit pipeline caching, something that should provide better performance when using DXVK, which is basically saying you're gonna get better performance for every game you are playing on Linux because everything uses DXVK. Interestingly, this feature is part of the new common Vulkan runtime that Mesa is working on, so that there's less code duplication between drivers, and future drivers will not have to rewrite their own implementation when they need to access that feature. There's also the implementation of two new Vulkan extensions in NVK that should fix a bunch of rendering issues in certain games, and also fix some rendering issues in older games, they showcased Genshin Impact, for example, but other titles should also benefit. The stable release of Mesa 24.1 is planned for mid-May, so it will not be too long before this lands, alongside a lot of other improvements to the NVK drivers. Now, with the release of Fedora 40 and Ubuntu 24.04, we should see the first real tests of NVK as a replacement for the proprietary NVIDIA drivers, and this should be pretty interesting. I'll see if any good benchmarks or reviews come in the next coming weeks, and if they don't, I'll probably make my own video on this topic. And Nintendo strikes again, this time against Gary's mod of all things. All Nintendo-related content that could have been added to Gary's mod through various mods and content packs was ordered to be removed from the Steam Workshop following DMCA takedown notices. Facepunch, the developer of Gary's Mod, said that they have confirmed these takedowns actually came from Nintendo. It is not someone trolling. And they also said that it was fair enough and that they had to respect that decision, although I don't agree with that at all. 
They also said that it will take a while because they have about 20 years of uploaded content to go through and they asked users who submitted these to help them and to delete them and also to never re-upload them again. And thanks Nintendo for ruining everyone else's fun. It's Gary's mod content. It's not like it's piracy or emulating your current games. It's fan-made content for an old-ass game to just recreate some Nintendo experiences. It's basically fan games. What are you doing, Nintendo? Leave people alone. You're not gonna tell me that any judge would say, oh, you never attacked a fan game for Gary's mod, so you lost all rights to your own intellectual property. You don't have to ruin everybody else's fun. And also, why isn't it Steam that needs to remove all of this from the Steam Workshop uh, instead of Face Punch? I don't know. It's kind of weird, but thanks, Nintendo. You still really suck. What doesn't suck, though, is this video sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. You all know about them, I talk about them all the time, but basically what you need to know is that if you need a new computer running Linux and you want to put your money towards a company that actually supports Linux instead of buying something from a Windows-only company and trying to install Linux afterwards, well, Tuxedo Computers is probably your best bet. They are from Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world and they have a big range of devices that covers every need and every price point with a lot of customization, the ability to open, repair and upgrade laptops and a lot more. I only run their devices these days. My channel is run of one of their laptops. My gaming needs are served by one of their desktops. I only use them and they're really good. So if you want to spend your money towards a new computer, you want to run Linux on it, and you want to support a company that lives or dies with Linux, then click the link in the description below and get yourself a tuxedo computer. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. There are all these buttons underneath the video you can click to make sure that they're recommended to other people. And if you really enjoy the channel, you know what to do as well. There are links in the description of the video to support it. Uh, you know how this works and the perks are explained down there. I don't need to waste your time. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.